Back in 2020, if you had asked what I thought about the Volkswagen new car range, which included the ID3 and Golf, I would have said, look away, because the number of issues that came with those cars. Well, four years later, and things seem to be changing for the brand, and this is the first car that brings the changes. This is the new Volkswagen Tiguan. Let's have a look to see if the changes are enough to bring Volkswagen back from where they were last decade. Hello everyone, welcome to Everything Cars and More. This is the number one place to be for car news and reviews. Sit back, buckle up, let's go. So let's start with the design of the new Tiguan and to start with overall it is curvier and bolder than before. At the front you can see this with its new sportier and less squarer headlights. These have HD matrix technology in them as well as a new daytime running light graphic signature that we will also see on the upcoming Passat and Golf Mark 8.5 facelift. The centre bar is also disconnected from the grille and it, this houses the Volkswagen logo and the light bar. The main grille has moved lower down and has this unique shape which makes it look like the car is smiling on the base models. On the R-Line models the grille and side vents are connected making it look like it has a big wide grille which makes this car look quite sporty. Let's go back to the base model now as this will be the most popular. The side vents are next to the main grille and the up or down we get a decent sized but discreet central air vent. It is also nice to see that the TIG one still has a bit of chrome when some manufacturers are moving away from using it. Moving around to the side and like I was saying we have a less boxy design. We have some curvy creases just above the rear wheels and we also have some creases between the wheels. But apart from that we get a minimalistic design. It does look sportier too, being less boxy. Wheel designs are also interesting, giving this aerodynamic effect to make it look like they could belong on an electric car. Wheel sizes range from 17 to all the way to the 20 inches. These wheels are 19 inches, which are perfect for this type of car now. Moving around to the back, and we get a new design language that we haven't seen on an internal combustion engine car from Volkswagen before. We get this black bar and this houses your 3D tail lights with light bar and logo. On the lower spec models though, this black bar is actually a red bar like what you will find on the Touareg. And to me, this isn't as good as in my opinion, but if you opt for the £1,820 light package, you can have this black bar. You also get the Tiguan lettering lower down as well as the number plate on the blue and you also get this plain but simple lower bumper design. We also get a decent spoiler up top too. Overall then the design is more modern which I do like and it is interesting to look at. Let's have a look at what engine and gearbox options you can have with the new Volkswagen Tiguan. So for engine options you can either have petrol or diesel. Both fuel types can only be had with a 7 speed DSG gearbox. This means the manual in the Tiguan is no longer available. Let's have a look at the petrol engines first. All petrol engines have mild hybrid technology. This means they can manoeuvre at lower speeds in electric mode without having to use the main internal combustion engine. The first engine is a 1.5 litre turbo unit with 128 brake horsepower. This can do 0 to 62 in 10.6 seconds which isn't that bad and it will do for most people. It is also front wheel drive and MPG is quite good at 46 combined. The next engine is the same engine but this time it has 148 brake horsepower. This can do 0 to 62 in 9.1 seconds and again it is front wheel drive and a combined MPG of still 46. The price difference between these engines is only £1,000 which isn't that bad for the amount of power difference that you actually get. For the diesel range you can have a 2 litre turbo unit. This has 148 brake horsepower and it can do 0 to 62 in 9.4 seconds. The MPG is also quite good at 53 too. 
There is also a plug-in hybrid coming soon to in the near future with a range of up to 62 miles on electric only driving using a 19.7 kilowatt hours battery pack. These versions use the improved 1.5 litre engine and the power outputs will be about 201 and 268 brake horsepower. The price of the new Volkswagen Tiguan starts at £34,060. Let's have a look at the interior. So, climbing inside the new Tiguan and you are welcomed with a new interior design not yet seen on any Volkswagen before. It is sort of a mashup between the ID7 interior and the Golf interior. Now, let's start with the dashboard. We get this black panel that stretches along the dash and this houses the side vents as well as the instrument cluster. On higher end models it also houses a graphic in front of the passenger with the Tiguan logo and some lines on it and this changes colour with the ambient lighting too. Most likely in the face if there will be a screen in this position, a bit like what you will find on the modern Porsches nowadays. The instrument cluster has a new graphic too from what we are used to from the Golf. Now in front of the black panel is the new infotainment system screen. This is the same one you would find on the ID7. This means it is running the latest MIB4 software that is much better over the MIB3 system. It also has chat GBT too. In front of the driver is the usual steering wheel but it only has physical buttons this time. There are no touch sensitive buttons on the steering wheel. The indicator stalk also houses the wipers too to make room for the gear selector near the steering wheel. Overall a big improvement then. The centre console has a minimalistic design to it and with only three buttons but these buttons are important. We get the engine start stop button, parking brake button and a multifunctional knob. This can be used for the volume, fan speed, zooming in on the map and different driving modes. This is the best feature to be included in this car and it also adds loads of features to one switch sti which still makes this car look minimalistic inside. A great feature then and I hope it will be included on other new Volkswagens too in the future. The door cards are also quite modern with more of this ambient lighting graphic and a 3D effect on the door handles too. One thing I will say though is that the ambient lighting in this car is very good making it car feel very modern. Finally the seats are also new and have much more support than before and feel much more premium. They are also much more comfortable too. They also look thick and high end and something we haven't seen from Volkswagen before. Let's have a look at the rear seats to see how they are. So considering the wheelbase is the same as the previous car you will still get the same legroom. This is no negative note as there is plenty of room for headroom and legroom. And you will also fit three people in the back too. The door cards also have a similar design to the ones on the front doors and you get your own climate control system, air vents, two USB-C ports as well as an armrest. You can also spec heated outer rear seats too. Let's have a look at the boot. So opening the boot to the new TIG one and you are welcomed with 652 litres. This is 37 litres bigger than before and you do actually notice it. The boots opening is also a good shape too so you can get boxy items in very easily. The size on the plug-in hybrid model will be less as the underfloor storage will be used up for the batteries but we don't know the exact size just yet. So what do I think of the new Volkswagen Tiguan then? Well it looks much better than before and it has corrected the wrongs from the previous generation of Volkswagens. The interior is also more premium than before and it is even more practical too. Is it worthy of a contender over the Kia Sportage, the best family SUV in my eyes? The engine range is also good and the plug-in hybrid engines are worth considering with the electric only range. The only thing that lets this car down though is the options list. For example, if you want a tyre pressure monitoring system, you must spec it as a £200 option. Now this may change in the future, 
But it's just simple things like that that should be included as standard for the price of car. A bit like heated seats, as they should be standard now on this price of car. Overall though, it is a good car. And if you want me to review this against the Kia Sportage, then let me know in the comments section below. If you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.